guys. I see you in the chat. I want to jump in real fast. I can't figure out my audio, so tell me if you can hear me. <laughs> my audio is being very naughty, but um, I want to jump in real fast, especially, hello, Shy Red Fox. Thanks for coming by and uh, to, uh, I guess, give this piece of news before uh, before people have to go if, if people are in a hurry. So that is totally legit. Please go and have lives. Um, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Uh, oh, good. You hear me. Great. That's awesome. I don't know what's going on with my audio over here. I got it all set up for doing my webinar this afternoon, and that was all good. And now I, now I can't figure it out to get back here. So anyway, um, so here's what's going on. Um, it is, it's freezing here. So I've got my gloves on. I've got my blanket on. I've like bundled up here. Um, I'm just gonna launch in because I didn't actually like prep any cool announcement or anything. So this is what I'm doing. I mentioned that I had picked up the uh, selenite dagger that I'm going to use. And I said I wanted to make turn that into a writing project and um, kind of develop that into, you know, like a little ride along and giveaway and things. But also I've been sitting here feeling a, a fat lot of useless uh, in the, uh, with within the greater, the greater worldwide scene and everything that is going on. And there is a lot going on, uh, actually. So, uh, you know, with Ukraine and, and uh, just a, a lot of things, I, mean, I don't need to list them. You're aware of, uh, you're aware of things. And so I had the idea of, um, Hey, I want to do this thing anyway, let's turn it into a fundraiser. So I'm kicking off, but, um, fantasy for footholds is what I'm calling this because we all need footholds, uh, as, as we face reality and stuff. I'm just gonna sum it up with stuff. Um, and it feels a lot like escapism is a very selfish act. And uh, you know, I'm just gonna stick my head in my, hand in my fantasy world where I don't have to deal with things. But the truth is we actually all need escapism, uh, or at least we all need escape uh, once in a while. And, uh, and it's not, it, it's not a bad thing. That's a break. So you can recharge so you can go back out into reality. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. So I am going to, and I, there will be like an actual blog post with all of the details on there. I got the, I got the, uh, the donation page set up approximately seven minutes ago. So very definitely, um, you guys are, are getting the, uh, <laughs> the raw it's we're, we're getting ready to launch version here. Um, but I will polish it up. So here's, here's what we're going to do. If, if people want to support, and by the way, there are lots of good charities working, uh, in, in Ukraine and in other places right now. Um, if you found some place that you've vetted and feel very comfortable with, obviously donate there. Like <laughs> I'm not jealous of donations. Um, I am doing this particular fundraiser through world vision, uh, who I have worked with in the past. They have excellent, ratings as far as um, watchdog organizations and everything. I think uh, I want to say something like 7% of their total income goes to uh, office and administrative costs and the rest of it is going to you know, actual work in the field um, and they are reviewed and they're, they're, just, they're, they're a good organization that I feel very comfortable working with uh, and they have uh, workers on the ground in Ukraine and I think this is important, very important in surrounding countries. So, um, to, to support the refugees as they're leaving. So, uh, so anyway, that's what we're doing. So, oh, yay. Sarah is also familiar with, with world vision. Um, so I am going to be asking for donations as I work on this story, uh, which I'm going to be working on probably very publicly <laughs> later this month, um, which terrifies me because I still don't have a story yet to work on. Um, but, uh, and then uh, Rhonda has signed on. We are going to do a live edit on stream so you can see her pick apart what I have done and, uh, and then we'll put it back together. And that will be part of the same uh, process. And then when it's done, I will package it up and send it out. Um, and then what I'll probably do is I'm still going to do the giveaway. I will find a way to uh, give extra chances to donors um, for the giveaway, or um, I also have um, additional uh, pieces of stone to to send out. So I'll, I'll find a way to do it. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll get those 
details sorted when I put that in writing. But in the meantime, just understand that that's a thing. So, so there we go. Um, and in theory, hello, Cloudbot. In theory, uh, the link will be coming in. <laughs> Live editing, I know, right? Like, what a glutton for punishment I am. But hey, if I'm going to ask people to give money, go ahead and uh, I'll put my soul on the line <laughs> and say you can watch this happen right here. Um, Cloudbot, do you want to? Would, would you like to uh, share? You know what? I'm just going to copy paste it. Here we go. I swear nothing's going to work for me right now. There we go. All right, here we go. There is the uh, first, uh, first ever share, first ever share of, of the donation page. And, um, and we will, uh, you know, again, I will follow up on that. So that's the big news. If you were here for that, great. The rest of it's going to be me organizing and trying to get started on this story. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. Um, and then, I don't know, there might be music behind me or something. I can turn that up or down or, or try to figure out what the heck's going on. Uh, but that's, that's what we're going on. That's what we're going on with tonight. So it is now 10 minutes after the hour. Uh, hi, it's Tuesday night. I am Laura and, and tonight I'm going to be, uh, yeah, writing up a blog post and getting started on this story. So, oh, thank you. Shy Red Fox emailing to yourself for later. That's very clever. Foxy. And, um, and then I hope you have a wonderful evening with whatever it is that you need to do. Oh, real quick. You did see, I'm sure, that the uh, Sesho no Seki uh, was split in half, right? Releasing the nine-tailed kitsune that's been imprisoned for a thousand years. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Amy caught that, caught that news. Um, I shared it on my social media earlier this week, someday earlier this week, if, if people have not seen that. Um, but it's, it's definitely worth look worth looking up. It is solidly in the this is fine category, she said, sipping her tea. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. Um, so it's funny because uh, so I was explaining my husband had not seen the news. So I was explaining um, that to him this morning and talking about, you know, the Sesho no Seiki, the, the killing stone, the, the kids, the evil imprisoned in this stone was so powerful that just approaching the stone could could kill you and he's like oh so it used to be radioactive and i said ah that's a possibility i said but i think it's you know it's on the side of a volcano i suspect there were actually volcanic gases around it um volcanic gases are amazingly cool and super terrifying and nightmare fuel but amazingly cool um so a lot of the sulfuric uh, gases and things are heavier than air, so they will sink down into little pockets and sit there, and you won't even know because everything is like the birds will fly over it, and it's fine. But you're like a couple of feet lower, and you die, like real darn fast. And it will tarnish if you're wearing, because um, I put that in a story. If you're wearing uh, copper, it'll tarnish the copper. I put that on the story because so people reading would hopefully know that it was a volcanic gas because the characters didn't know. So writes up Ohuda for the house. Yes. Yes, I'm gonna cover my house in uh, Fuda and um, and um, oh my gosh, uh, she may she may the little jagged paper folds. She may yeah, I'm losing all my street cred right now. She may sorry, is that it? Help me out. Anyway, but anyway, yes. Um, so there's our there's our fun uh, <laughs> fun disaster for today. Let me. Pull up Atticus, and I have, as I said, I barely got the donation page live right before uh, the stream started. So I've positively not at all set up for writing the story tonight. So great for everything. Okay, good. Shy Red Fox can't remember the name of the paper things either. I swear there's Jimmy. Jimmy, why? Oh my gosh. I'm just going to Google it real fast because. I'm sitting here feeling dumb. Hold on. All right. I'm trying to type. My fingers are super cold. She day. She day. Okay. All right. I feel better. I was completely, um, completely feeling a little bit dumb. <laughs> All right. 
Okie doke. This is time to ponder the plot. Yes, yes, it is time to ponder the plot. And I'll take a little brainstorming right now. Um, I want to say that maybe um, certain donation levels or something would get to influence the story, but I haven't worked out yet how that's gonna happen. So um, so it, as I set up with things tonight, you know, like, this is not how we, this is not how smart people do it. Smart people like sit down, get it all organized, and then they present like, here is a complete thing ready to go. Kind of like Brandon freaking Sanderson did this past week, which um, bravo, dude, bravo. Uh, yeah, I, um, so if, if, if you're watching this and you have not uh, seen what's been going on in Sanderson land, um, somehow, <laughs> it could be, it could be impossible. Um, he launched a Kickstarter that is now the one, number one Kickstarter of our time, at uh, all time, I believe, funded fully to a million dollars in the first 20 or 30 minutes or something, and then went on, um, last I checked, it was somewhere above 20 million, which I think it hit on the second day, and, uh, and then has kind of leveled off around there. Um, so, yeah, and hold on, why is my phone making noises? Please mute, I'm streaming. Um, and... So I guess some people got a little salty about it because the man made, you know, what he didn't make, but he's, he's taken in what, $20 million in a day or something. But I'm just in awe, like how, you know, first of all, what, what is there to be mad about? How dare this man write good books that consistently please an audience? And how dare he spend years traveling around to conventions being nice to people so that when he's ready to launch a self-publishing project, people want to support him enthusiastically. The monster, you know. Like, okay. Um, now, but that said, I hate him with every fiber of my jade green envious heart. Not because of the money. Like again, I feel like he he put in his time. He did good effort. He got bravo. And and he's not rolling around in that money like Scrooge McDuck. You know, he has legitimate costs. He has an entire team. He's got uh, self pub and audiobooks and all kinds of stuff to do. Um, no, I am jade green envious because his way of coping with pandemic stress was to write five novels and my coping mechanisms were not that productive. That is why I'm envious, uh, you know, personality types and other things, but dude, go be successful. That's awesome. <laughs> so that's fantastic. Oh, 26,099,941 right now. Seeker just checked it. Freaking amazing. Like, bravo, dude. You know, Kate, how dare he write four books in two years in his free time? It was five books, five books. And, um, and it, and it was, yeah, on top of his other contracted books, like the man just exhales words or something. But, um, but again, I'm super impressed. I'm very jealous, but also very happy for him. So there we go. <laughs> Sorry, it's still going up, Seeger says. Um, no, I was laughing at uh, uh, Sarah saying, thank you for saying that, you're jealous of someone. Yes, oh my gosh, I'm jealous all the time. I'm jealous frequently, actually. I love your work, but I'm also green with envy because you can't finish the freaking novels. There's a lot of freaking novels that exist in my head. I'm trying to have a conversation with the poets I right now about maybe becoming a completed novel. Wouldn't that be nice? Don't you want to come out into the world and see other people? Wouldn't, doesn't that sound fun? Poet's Eye novel in my head. Pretty please. Okay, yeah, so that's also a thing that I'm trying to work on. Shy Red Fox, how dare he give self-publishers hope? I know, right? Like, I actually think this is a really good thing uh, because, you know, he's establishing a precedent that people trust and he's going to deliver a good product because you know, he's got a whole team to dedicated to doing quality product. And then people will say, Oh, we had a really great experience. Let's do that again. And yeah, I, I, I truly, truly do not understand what people are salty about other than, Oh, he made money and I didn't, which, you know, Hey, I, I don't know if you've looked around a lot, but the world's kind of like that sometimes. So poet's eye is a major introvert. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Only part of it. Like the first third, I, I went back and I was doing some editing, um, uh, uh, 
days ago. I don't know, whatever. The point is, I was doing some editing and I was like, oh, this beginning's pretty solid. Like the first, first 35K, I feel pretty good about. It makes a nice little, nice little novella, you know, on its own and a good teaser and a setup for the rest of the book. Really should have a rest of the book, but that first 35K is really good. So yeah, I have somewhere between 100 and 120K written on it, but um, quite a lot of that is fill in this chapter later, which is not useful for having a whole book. So yeah, but yeah, so if you, if you see me posting later, you know, my story is hiding under the bed and refuses to come out. It's probably a poet's eye, which has been in my head for, oh my gosh, actually, I'm just going to hang on. I need to have a little vent for a second. Um, I think poet's eye came into my brain in its original nascent form seven years ago. So I do not write fast. I, I don't, um, I can sit down, like I can, I can sit down and produce words quickly on a given day. But I, as far as like idea to completed novel, that is not a fast process. Um, you know, and anyway, so I saw something go by today and, uh, the person backtracked a little bit later, not, not really backtracked, but said what I said was not what I meant kind of thing. So anyway, point is, uh, a person was saying like, you know, because so many authors are doing rapid release, release now, um, which rapid release is, uh, generally people are releasing like a book a month or, or something like that. I, I actually know people who are releasing like two books a month or three books a month. And I'm sorry, just no, I, you've probably got a whole stable of people locked in your basement helping you produce because there's just no, I don't even comprehend how that could happen. But a lot of rapid release people will do a book every four to six weeks. Um, and she was saying, so, you know, she was read a book by a person who does, you know, one book a year and how, you know, what, what must her first draft be like that, you know, then it takes a year to produce. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, feel like that's a little mean <laughs> it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that a person is a worse writer because it took them a year to produce a book instead of a month like you know and, and you're assuming all books are equal and you're assuming all writers work in the same way and a lot of things and oh my gosh like I I get heat from people because I produce as fast as I do and so clearly you know and anybody who I do not, I do not agree with this. And there's like a whole episode I did on NaNoWriMo and all that. So, so take this for what it's worth. But I have been told a number of times that if, you know, since people who do NaNoWriMo or like me or whatever, clearly don't care about quality in their books. And I was like, that's an unsupportable statement. Uh, but, but it's so funny. Like you don't get that on one side, like, oh, you did, you did 50,000 words in a month, so you must be a terrible writer. Oh, you only did produced one book a year or, or more, uh, you know, less often than that. So you must be a terrible writer. And I'm like, can we all just get over the stigma? I'm like, I got stuff to do. There's my rant for today. I even brought tea, so that's good. Yeah, okay, sorry, I'm catching up with the chat here. <laughs> I was like, um, the story comes slowly for some. I simmer, like, I... I, honestly, I told you like um, Poet's Eye came, came into my head about seven years ago and I would say it was at least three years before I realized what the theme of one of the subplots was. And I was like, I can tell you exactly where it was. I can tell you exactly what road I was driving down. You know, like trees, gravestones, whatever. And I was like, oh, oh, that's what the story's about. I didn't know that. Um, and so I need that time. <laughs> if, you, if you want the story in a month, I mean, I can sit down and I can bang out a lot of words, but it is not going to be the same story. It's really not. So and Shired Fox says, and they are not accounting for research, right? Here's the thing. And I don't, I'm not denigrating contemporary romance in any way right now, but if I sat down and wrote a contemporary romance, it is not going to take the same kind of world building or research or, you know, whatever that it is going to take to create one, possibly two brand new universes. <laughs> um, so, and I, I always, um, you know, I, I make fun of myself because I say, you know, the Shard of Elan series was a second world fantasy, but it was a second world fantasy that portaled into a third world fantasy. <clears throat> so, you know, that was just dumb on my part as far as trying to be uh, quick and efficient. It's not going to happen. Um, 
same thing with Poet's Eye. I have two very different cultures uh, that that need to be developed from scratch. You know, not from scratch. Nothing's ever from scratch. But um, but I need to build out, okay, how does this religious system fix affect this thing? And you know, I want this feature, but oh, that doesn't make sense with this. So I need to go back and rebuild this stuff or whatever. And you don't have to do that if you're writing, you know, something about uh, somebody who's got a modern job that you don't have to explain because everybody knows it and um, they're living in a modern city. They don't have to explain because everybody knows it, right? They're just, they're entirely different animals. So sitting down and saying, um, you know, why can't they both be done in the same amount of time? I don't know. Why can't I get, you know, a microwave pot pie and a roast turkey done in the same amount of time? They're both food. Grump, grump, grump. Thank you for coming to my rant. Okay, <laughs> so so this is me not getting any writing done. All right, let me uh, let me go and actually try to open up things. All right. Doop doom. Setting things up. All right. So here we are. Um, actually, I'm going to delete this. I know it's terrifying, but I'm working on that in Scrivener and I don't want to have multiple copies floating around because it scares me. Against a Lonely Shore comes out, well, it comes to my patrons later this month. So, all right, Moonblade. These are the notes I made last time when last we streamed. Um, by the way, I'm so sorry if anybody showed up last week. I did put on the schedule that I was not streaming last week, but I don't think I really broadcast that on social media or anything, so I apologize. Um, but last week, uh, Tuesday afternoon, I did a webinar for the Pro Writing, Pro Writing Aid Fantasy Week, um, and I did a, a session on why your magic system is actually science and uh, that and so that's actually available for replay free from from pro writing aid if that sounds interesting i had a lot of fun doing it but then i got on a plane and flew to new york city uh to get my broadway binge because you know we've been a little short on broadway for the last couple of years so i saw moulin rouge which i had seen before and i uh, saw that again which was a lot of fun and I saw The Music Man with Hugh Jackman and Sutton Foster. And uh, and then I saw Six, which I had heard the soundtrack, but I had not seen the show. And I highly recommend it. Um, it's uh, history plus girl power plus very witty wordplay equals much fun. So, yes. Um. <laughs> Okay, I know I want I know I want homemade pot pie was not the takeaway there, but man, now I want homemade pot pie. <laughs> Here we go, yeah. Okay, let's get um, let me see where we're going here. chapter chapter one hey guys what's our protagonist's name anybody <laughs> well uh i'm also going to try to go back and see if i can fix how music is working yeah i don't have any sound coming through here at all so weird I can see music going on. Norman. It's good. I was thinking uh, protagonist might be female, but I hadn't actually specified. Or perhaps it is a girl named Norman. Ellery. Ooh, I kind of like Ellery Norman as a name. Kova. Oh, we're getting an all in here. Ellery is a pretty name. Norman, Ellery, Kova. Um... All right, um, I'm gonna start making making some notes here. Like this. Borrowed it from the novella I read yesterday. Hey, excellent, like it, all right. Um, 
And where are we? I need a village name. I'm picturing a... We are in late pre-industrial. It's where I'm just going to very generally produce that. So we are in uh, an advanced low-tech society. We're not... Um, we don't have industrial machinery, but we are not cave people. Shara, wait, no. <laughs> I believe the name Shara is spoken for. Well, I heard that. What did I just hear? Hello, Fox Wright. Fox Writer. Sorry, I'm trying to read, read my chat. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Um... Okay, so, all right, so I heard one entire sound from my entire audio setup. That's great. <laughs> I'll work it out later. Um, in the meantime, let's kick off and, um, oh, thanks for the follow, Fox Rider. I appreciate that. That's probably the sound that I heard. Excellent. Okay. So, why is, yeah, I'm just going to throw this, I don't know why my chat box not working, couldn't tell you, and probably ought to want to and there we go. I want this fundraiser group showing up. Aha! Okay. Okay, I'm just going to park you right there. Look at me. I'm so organized. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. This will look better when I actually figure out what I'm doing and then do a proper, proper donation stream. Rivertown. Rivertown located on the outer desert okay <laughs> i like no actually let's put river town near near a desert that'd be fun um river town notably named because it is the town near the river unlike the other towns in the um in the desert and rivers do happen in deserts i give you the nile which is actually like weird. <laughs> like you would, you would look like here's the here's the water, and then there's like a strip of green, and then there is sand. Like somebody drew an actual line and said, everybody get up on this side and on this side. All the vegetation here, all the sand here. So. <laughs> no, no, no. It wasn't near a desert until you said River Town, and I just decided, oh, like let's be let's put it near a desert. Honestly, that is how. Um, an, am an amazing amount of my world building occurs as I was just like, well, let's just make this weird. Um, this is, this is, you know, quirky and unexpected. And then, oh, now let's justify it. Okay. River town is the town that is on the river. That's why it's called a river town. Uh, and it is on, uh, so it's, it's in a desert. So that stands out and we can totally do that because as I said, the Nile does that. There are other rivers that do that. Um, and so that gives me uh, some some world building to play with and honestly now I get to have like a moon rock in the desert and that actually sounds pretty cool and I get to do all the um, ridiculous hyper romantic imagery so okay cool uh, <laughs> welcome to my world building process <laughs> like this sounds weird I can make this make sense oh now it sounds pretty that's pretty much exactly how my brain works all the time What's the three-tailed fox on the bottom of my screen? Oh, yay, yes. Um, that is my, my author logo, and it was uh, Julie, but um, what's, her, what's her actual name that she's going by for her, um, for her art business? Oh my gosh, Timekeeper, Timekeeper Art. <laughs> Sorry, totally blanked out. Um, she did that for me years ago, so that's on my uh, business cards and all my cool stuff. All right, um, I really like Kova. Let's put Kova 
from Rivertown on the river in the desert. Uh, I need to name this desert. Um, uh, Ellery is definitely going to have a have an appearance in here too, and probably a Norman. I'm going to get all of these names in here. Um, and let's name this desert. What are we going to name this desert? Time, yes, that. Is that, is that our desert name or is that a, uh, a function of how I need to uh, focus? I need an animal mascot. I need to make these biddable items. That would be smart. So, okay, hold on. Let's go, let's go up here. We're gonna go to notes and plans. Um, you know what? We're actually gonna just add a new thing here. Um, features and bids. Name the animal mascot. Uh, name the ship. <laughs> We're gonna do it this way. All right. Oh, oh. Um, the Suha Des Desert means dry in creation. Oh, that's oh, that's cool. Good to know. Horse Kill. That's a pretty accurate desert name. Uh, Scorson Deserts. The Talmai Deserts. This is like high fantasy or based somewhat in reality. Or we are um, probably low fantasy. Uh, I said you know just kicking things out. You know for a place to start, everything changes from where it starts. But for a place to start kicking out we're saying uh, late pre-industrial civilization so we are an advanced state of low tech meaning um, we don't have industrial machinery so no cars no tanks uh, we do have uh, you know mechanical devices and stuff we're not we're not living in the caves so if you pick picture like uh, 18th 19th centuries ish until I decide something else Again, that's how that's exactly how world building works for me is I start with something and then when I'm like, that's not convenient, let's change it to something else and then justify that. And that's how <laughs> my world building works. So, all right, I'm going to, um, I'm going to come back here and say, it's going to name the deserts here. Uh, Suha. Dry in Croatian. Okay, I'm going to make a note of that because that's pretty cool. Horse kill, which is exactly what it says on the tin. Scorson. Tell my, all right, making notes. So, all right. Okay, so that gives me enough to work with here. Um, Kova needs a friend. Kova's friend is probably going to be Ellery because I can. Um, or a frenemy from another town. Okay. I'm going to work on, um, oh, Fox Rider. Don't, don't say you have no, you know, don't have many good ideas. All ideas are, uh, or rough drafts that get <laughs> reworked. That's, I don't think there's any other way to have good have ideas. Um, everything's a first draft, right? Everything's a first draft. Okay. <laughs> okay. Give me just a second to ponder and I will start a scene. But I have no idea where I'm going with this. So I'm gonna need just a moment to get organized. This is where it'd be really handy to hear that music, if I had music. Guy or girl, is that the um is that for the frenemy? I think I think the frenemy is gonna be male. I think. Unless it turns out not to be, but 
Yeah, yeah. I think the front of me is going to be um, from a rival town, but then they end up having to work together. Ellery <laughs> is from Banksville because it's built on the river bank. <laughs> I love it. Banksville from the other bank. I like it. I want it to be on the other bank because then we have the like the other side of the tracks because your river is your main side of transportation. There you go. Okay. <sighs> Basically, I don't know if it, I don't know how many other people do this because I think it's the kind of thing that most of us just don't admit to ourselves. But um, I write stupid little uh, in jokes to myself all the time. And uh, so somebody will have a name or, or there will be a term or whatever and it's like a ridiculous reference joke in another, another language or something just pathetically nerdy like that. Um, so I know Patrick Rothfuss had some firefly jokes in uh, Name of the Wind. And uh, I, po I posted something recently about um, the Claire Ledger in Shard of Elan is totally a reference joke to the Claire Bible from Slayers. So, yeah. Yep, yep. Fish Bale and Fish Bill, and they hate each other. <laughs> it's like the Great Herring Wars from, you know, yes. <laughs> Skip my uh, Betty White jokes in there. Yes. Blaze. Blaze. I like Blaze. Okay. <laughs> All right. There are so many Slayer's jokes in Poet's Eye because Poet's Eye is, it, it, it has a lot of Slayer's jokes. It has a lot of Slayer's jokes. So, uh, so yeah. So if you haven't, if you're not familiar with uh, Slayer's, which was, 1990s parody series uh, that turned out to be quite good on its own when it, you know, even though it was, existed solely to mock other things. Um, so that, <laughs> yeah, that's, you're going to get it because it's all in Poet's Eye. Okie dokie. Um. Still writing for readers to find the Easter eggs in the Wayward King. Uh, uh, Windward, Windward King. I cannot make my mouth, like I know the title, but my mouth always wants to say Wayward. I mean, he's a little bit Wayward too. Not allowed to be too Wayward because he won't let himself, but he's a little bit Wayward. The Windward King. Do you want us to throw us a hint? Throw us a hint in the chat. <laughs> twink is, is not a twink. The Windward King. All right, I need to focus. So you can throw us a couple of, uh, throw, us a, throw us a hint in the chat and then I'll come back um, when I've written like, I don't know, maybe two sentences yet tonight. Okay, <laughs> look at me being, look at me being productive.
There, I got two sentences. Bravo me. Two whole sentences. Oh my gosh. Oh man, writing, writing live with people looking over your shoulder is really hard. Just saying that. Okay. I'm doing it for, doing it for a good cause. Um, oh, this is Atticus, Fox Rider. Um, this is Atticus, which, let me see if I can, can you do that? No, don't do that. Um, here we go. Yeah, Atticus, um, and, uh, so it's a combo writing software, layout software. Okay, so Kate Kate reveals to us the part where there's a bunch of Korth sketches on the wall and they're actually all Shara shapeshifted into different people. Um, he's very specific people. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't remember if I caught that when I read that or not because it's been a hot minute. Um, so, okay, that sounds really fun. Okay. <laughs> the void of Google, a dark and dangerous place with many, many, many rabbit holes. Um, all right, so I mentioned that uh, rivers do happen in the desert. See, look, the Nile is an example, and now we have crocodiles. That is how this works in my brain. <laughs> so behold, my system. It's not a system. Oh, and there was a Tangled reference. Yes, crocodiles. I know, right? Crocodiles. They're actually pretty amazing. Terrifying, but amazing. And they're not on the Nile anymore. At least not on the lower Nile. Because a lot of reasons. But here they're still on the Nile because I said so. It's not the Nile. I need to be in the river too. Name the river. <laughs> so, do all the things. Okay. to be continued just as soon as I figure out what those other reasons are. No, I'm not an outline writer. Why do you ask? <laughs> oh, hey, Adam. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, I, uh, I actually did, um, ooh, fun fact. Let me distract myself from what we're doing here. Uh, so last November, I did a, let me just hop over into the chat while we talk for a second. Last, not last, not last November. Oh my gosh, November, 2020. November, 2020, I did a marathon stream for charity, uh, raising money for international justice mission. And we actually did quite well. I had to boost our target um, as we were going that day. So bravo, all of you people. Um, and I had, did the, that day I did both writing streams and interviews with people. So I broke it up uh, throughout the day. Uh, and the story that I wrote, which actually 
got into flow on and actually got some stuff done on, which amazes me because I am not a person like, I don't even write in co coffee shops, guys. Like I am a very private, I need my nook writer. Um, I don't even write in coffee shops or things like that. So writing on stream is completely weird to me. Um, but I actually got into kind of a flow and got into the story. And that is the story that you guys are gonna, well, not all of you guys, but um, my patrons are gonna get uh, this month. Um, the story that I wrote in that stream you know, way back when. Um, it's about 7,500 words and uh, it's kind of space fantasy. So, ooh. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I, I completely get it. Like writing on stream and writing for um, a charity stream because I want to stop and I want to talk about like, you know, why, why is this a valid charity? Why should you donate to it? You know, all this kind of thing. Um, but also um, it did help that I would just like kind of say, okay, for the next 20 minutes, I'm going to actually sprint and do this. Uh, which is not at all what I'm doing tonight. <laughs> but also like then I had a little bit more idea of what I was doing. Not a lot, not a lot more actually, but um, but I did shut up and work more than I'm doing tonight. So that matters. <laughs> That's the thing that happens. Um, so yeah, I, the people who stream writing all the time, um, Shy Red Fox frequently does uh, productive writing streams and she will talk and write at the same time. And I just don't even, how, how, how does your brain? I can't, okay, <laughs> so. Um, Fox writer says there are some species of glowing algae worms or, uh, quotations that could add some nice aesthetic. That is true. And, um, I'm big into bioluminescent everything. It's very pretty. Um, Ooh, a heart river. Okay. Um, speaking to our frenemy in secret. <laughs> like that. Okay. Um, Oh, depending on her age, I'm, yeah, I'm picturing upper teens just because I'm, I'm kind of going with like why adventure very, very generally not remotely committed to that yet. Um, but that's the vibe I'm getting from the, what is this? Six, six sentences that I have so far. <laughs> One, two, no, not even six. Nope. Nope. Haven't made it to six sentences yet. <laughs> Two, three, 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 four, four sentences. Okay. Fox, right? If you're in the, if you're in the opening part of your story, if you're in the rough start, first draft, go ahead and info dump. It's called a first draft. Have a good time. <laughs> like, you can always smooth stuff out later. Oh yes, as Kate says, info dump now, edit later. See exactly, exactly. Kate, your town is also on a river and also needs a name. Um, 
You know, I did just see uh, Music Man. So River City is available, I think. <laughs> so right here in River City, because your story is going to have trouble, 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 trouble. Thanks, Al. I'll, I'll behave now. Thanks. I will not behave. I will just sit on that until later. <laughs> Oh, bad news, Fox Rider, <clears throat> who says, I despise editing. Hey, you know what? Writing is rewriting. Like, that's just, now, everybody gets to choose their levels of, you know, commitment and, uh, and uh, you know, if, if you are, um, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're writing, writing for fun and, and, and pleasure and, and personal enjoyment and enrichment, then great, do exactly that. Uh, then have a good time. But, uh, Editing is also a thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> Kate, I love editing and despise drafting trade. All right, you guys just you know, exchange contact info. There you go. Um, okay. Probably need to get, I mean, at least I got up to six sentences, but let me see if I can get a little bit further. There, I have added political intrigue, green taxes. Adam is a heavy outliner. Yeah, bravo, more power to you. I, I, I admire and respect my outliner friends. Um, outliners, uh, have have some big advantages i'm not even gonna lie if you can do that bravo i don't do that Thanks, I admire pantsers because you're like magical wizards who pull stuff out of thin air. <laughs> no, we pull stuff out of caffeine and sugar. Let me just be honest about what the secret is. Um, pull stuff out of caffeine and sugar and uh, and many of, much of the time, it makes sense. And then when it doesn't, we have editing for that. I named him Theron of Oak and Shield without realizing exactly why that sounded like it's such a good name. Ah, okay, yep. Um, have definitely done similar things in the past. Uh, I named a character and my sister's like, you know, that's like such and such actor's name, right? And I was like, oh, no, totally. Oh, it was his name. His name was, um, it was James Marsters. James Marster. I just did the singular, James Marster. And, uh, and Elena's like, yeah, James Marster's an actor. And I was like, oh, huh, okay. Had to change it. Only changed it a little bit though. Panzer all the way, yeah, Sarah. Um, so <laughs> I think Panzer is my natural form, and because I'm trying to be more efficient, I have learned how to do like a very few bullet points. But clearly, that's not what's happening here. Uh, so um, yeah, but usually I'm I'm pretty good about setting a mood, and then I can sit down and just write in that mood. Here I am not setting a mood. Here I cannot hear any of the music because of my audio issues, and I'm just hanging out, chatting with you guys instead of focusing. So. Yeah, that's not working out. <clears throat> oh, I should probably... Can I swap back? How about we try... There we go. Let's do that. Try to get actually a few more sentences before I wrap up for tonight. Because I have to go out and... Uh, to go to the grocery store because 
food. Food is also important. Get way more words done with food. But be chill, I do that. Let me, let me get a few more sentences. So I added, um, I, I, I put, the, I put, made the barge into a grain barge. It's tearing grain taxes. So let's see where we go. Okay. 
I'm gonna pause here because it is after eight o'clock for me, which means I need to uh, get off and head to the store. <laughs> and um, yeah, thanks for coming and hanging out with me, guys. I appreciate it. And thanks for listening to my very enthusiastic launch of my um, noun, noun fundraiser. <laughs> Conversation is a rough draft. Uh, and then we can, I will, I will get that all written up and shared properly in a blog post and uh, we can uh, see how that goes over the next month. So do, let me see, where's my calendar? Hello calendar, I need a calendar. Um, what is, where, hello, where's my thing? There we go, live editing with Rhonda. Uh, here, we'll be here on the 29th. I wanted to double check that is it is the last Tuesday of March and hopefully I will have more than eight sentences or whatever it is that I have now um, so she can do some actual editing so I will not be uh, I will try to be leaving everything pretty much as, as rough draft so uh, so that we can see what what editing that process actually looks like so um, sorry Fox right you can go find another streamer there are many good streamers and normally at this point we would go and write Elena but Elena is uh, ill and not streaming tonight so we will not be doing that so you're on your own to find another streamer I'm sorry um, thank you Sarah yeah um, and yeah I will hope to be, uh, be putting out some more information about uh, the fundraiser and what later but um, yeah we'll have time uh, I'll be doing that at least um, all this month and uh and then uh, like i said i'll get organized we'll actually figure out what i'm doing as far as um uh donations and chances for the drawing and and all, all of that good stuff we'll work that out so oh wait hold on i need to i need to clarify because there actually are legal restrictions on um no no because it's not a purchase it's not a purchase so it's fine nobody's purchasing the story when they're donating so you can just donate separately and then i will choose donors names will go in to the drawing when i do the drawing so that's actually okay things are complicated when you like trying to do this stuff from a professional standpoint okay uh anyway so yeah we're good um and i will see you guys next week and um there you go. Kate wants to name the animal companion. All right. Awesome. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll start throwing down <laughs> for things. So anyway, um, I appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with me. Uh, I'll try to get more than eight sentences the next time you see me. <laughs> we'll see where we go. Everybody take care and have an awesome night or morning or wherever the heck you are. Okay. Bye guys.